We found out last summer that the developer of Contractors is making their next game, Contractors Showdown, which is basically a battle royale game version of the shooter. This got people real excited when we first saw a teaser trailer for it, but now the game has actually gone into an alpha. This is a closed alpha, but there is a process through their Discord if you want to put in an application. I'll leave a link in the top comment description in case you're interested in trying to get in there to help them test this and get this ready to launch. But it's brought up the big question, will this be a free game at launch? Typically across the entire gaming land, landscape battle royale games have been free because they need a large player base to really be successful. So far over on their discord, they keep saying that the price will depend. They're not ruling out that it could be free, but it may have a price all depending on how the testing goes and the interest goes in it. I've said before that I really like contractors and I think it's one of the best shooters even above Pavlov, although Pavlov is much more popular. So it's usually easier to find a match. Contractors just has great gun mechanics, the movement, the melee weapons. And that's why it really excites me that they're working on a battle royale game because we already know they can make a great shooter. Shooter. Hopefully as more people are testing out this alpha, we'll get some more details about the game out to all of you. And if any of you out there are in the alpha and you're allowed to talk about it, let us know in the comments how it's going so far. It sounds like so far people are really enjoying it. We are just two days from Asgard's Wrath 2 dropping on the quest. And I've got to tell you, I got to play a little bit of the pre-release so far. And this game seems like it's going to be really, really good. From the moment you go into the game, the graphics in it for quest look like basically as top notch as they can get. This is quest three we're talking about, and this is a pre-release version but from the very opening battle before you even get to the actual title screen the game just has you feeling like this amazingly powerful warrior i actually never got to play asgard's wrath 1 which is still a pc only title but the 60 hours promised by asgard's wrath 2 almost makes me want to try to go back and play asgard's wrath 1 first to see how that is in comparison interestingly though so far although the game is free if you got a quest 3 it is primarily optimized for the quest 2 quest 3 optimizations will come at a later date but even now on Quest 3 what I was playing looks really good. And if you did pre-order it, you do also get the original Asgard's Wrath free on PC. Hopefully then you have a way to play it on PC because a lot of Quest players just play on Quest. So far, I've got to say my early impressions, I just want to be playing this right now in Resident Evil 4 on PSVR 2. That's all I want to be doing. Although we still don't have the mixed reality mode Beat Saber teased before the Quest 3 launch, Quest 3 did just get an update dropping OST or original soundtrack number 6 and an experimental performance toggle that lets you pick between 90 or 120 hertz. There's also some other minor details, retextured obstacles, and new quality of life features in the new update. It's exciting to see another OST 6, and a lot of times for channels that make content on Beat Saber, these are really helpful because the OSTs usually never have any copyright issues, unlike pretty much anything else you're going to play or do in Beat Saber on YouTube or Twitch. Although we can't guarantee that yet with OST 6, that's usually the case, although it's surprising because OST 6 actually has big names like Camellia, Boom Kitty, Lindsay Sterling. It's a free update out on all platforms. Although if you are a content creator and you want to go make tracks on these, let me know in the comments if you did and if they got hit with any sort of copyright issues. Hopefully they continue on that trend now with OST 6 so that content creators out there have more songs that they can actually make videos on without running into copyright issues. VitXR has long been known as one of the VR fitness apps to test out if you want to try exercising. They've dropped something new called Slam and they're saying this is an active game rather than a fitness studio that's using your mixed reality pass through. Now be warned, they're saying if you want to test this out, they're recommending a 10 foot by 10 foot space to play in. As you can see in the trailer here, this actually has you running around the room taking out targets and they're saying this is more like a hit class. There's a time mode where you hit as many as you can in time or survival where you get less and less time to get to these targets. I feel like this is a good use of mixed reality because a lot of people who get the quest want to for fitness. A lot of fitness apps have you standing in one place with targets coming at you. This allows you to actually free move and move around but with that security of mixed reality knowing that you're going to see if your dog has wandered into your space, child, or even some somebody just moved the coffee table rather than you just crashing right through it. FitXR is one of those apps that does have a monthly subscription fee though if you want to check it out. If you're a fan of K-pop or just a fan of watching people react to K-pop, there is a new video out about the app Venta X that lets people check out different K-pop experiences in VR. And there was one recently that came out called Girls in Wonderland, which we almost talked about on the news, but I don't think we ever did because it just looked kind of awkward. Well, now if you want to see that awkwardness, this video shows other people trying out in VR and reacting to that. Over on React to the K, you got different students and alumni in New York watching this and talking about how weird they feel about how close the artists get to them, how the artists are interacting with them by hitting them with flowers and other stuff. I will say I actually watched a good chunk of the video myself because it's interesting to see how people react that aren't always used to doing VR and it was funny to see how they react to it. I always enjoy these videos and I enjoy actually when we make these videos of getting people who haven't done much VR to get in and react to it before. I'll leave a link in case you want to check out the video for yourself or if you just want to get in and 
see the actual K-pop concert up close, you can check out Venta X and see what you think of it yourself, and then let me know in the comments. We've been following and talked about Wisdom Watcher a few times before on the channel. Well, now it's actually entering early access. We got a new early access launch trailer. This is a game that promises intense combat and dark fantasy, and watching the trailer here, it looks like it's going to be delivering on it. You might recognize this because there was a free demo out before, although now that it's gone into early access, if you want to check it out on Steam or Quest App Lab, you're going to be paying $14.99. There is still a demo available, at least on Steam or on Side Quest, if you want to check it out on your Quest. The game not only promises a lot of different weapons, there's firearms, melee, but also environments you can actually do some destruction to. This is one I've been watching out for a while now, so it hasn't been on your list. It might be a good time to start keeping an eye on it. We had a pretty positive reaction when Vampire the Masquerade first launched this stealth game that pits you as a vampire, actually sucking the blood from your victims. Well, if you've been kind of on the fence about whether or not you want to buy, they are actually allowing you now to try out the first hour for free. On nearly every headset now, you can get the first hour, although on PSVR 2, you do have to be a PS Plus Premium subscriber, but on Quest 2, 3 Pro, all of those, you can check it out for one hour. The stealth element, the way you move through it, the collectibles you can find, and the fact that you feel like you can really climb around a lot of parts of the city is pretty cool. I would say if you've been wondering about it, go check out the demo, and once the hour is up, it's going to let you decide whether or not you want to buy it at that point. But with all that going on, what else is happening out there in the gaming scene? What are you looking forward to? I feel like some of my big ones have finally hit. Resident Evil 4, Asgard's Wrath 2 is almost here. Assassin's Creed, I sadly haven't been back in much since it launched. If you're still playing it, what do you think? Are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? I never played any of the actual Assassin's Creed games flat either, so I feel like maybe it just wasn't the game for me. But I did really like how the game looked and how the world felt, so I'm hoping to get back in there with some more time, but we've got a lot going on. We'll be in Atlanta this weekend. If you are, hit me up. Let me know. We should come out and hang out and play some games together. Thanks again for being here, and I'll see you in another reality.